Welcome to Power Your Profits podcast, your friendly guide in bringing your business revenue to the next level. Listen as host Susie Carter hears inspiring stories of success from her fellow entrepreneurs and transformational leaders. Prepare to make significant change to your strategies as they unravel the secrets of building multi-million dollar businesses and the most effective tips on finance, marketing, and sales accountability. If you want to make your first step towards explosive business growth, this is the right podcast for you. Without further ado, here is your host, Susie. Welcome my next guest, Ike Aiku. Having made seven figures in his business twice and lost it, it brings very relevant experience to his role as a business growth strategist, a mindset coach, and professional finance expert to his clients. Working with two the largest national coaching companies in the industry and leaning on wisdom gained from overcoming many adversities in his life, Ike has the ability to change the way his clients think and feel about things and how they can create the results they truly desire. He's purpose-driven and he works with purpose-driven entrepreneurs, working with professionals and families hire him to shrink their financial independence timelines down from 30 years to as little as two years. This is juicy while growing yourself and your team as a leader. Please welcome Ike. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to welcome you back to this episode of Power Your Profit podcast. And I have a business growth strategist. You know, I'm going to bring you my badass friends in the world. Ike, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for who you are in the world and serving. I always love our time together. Yes, indeed. It's always rich. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's like my brother from another mother. Our stories are similar, but different. So really share. I've done your formal bio, but I want you to share like what you do in the world, who you serve and your secret sauce. Sure. So, I mean, you've run across this before. You meet people who just seem to be existing versus living, right? So what I do is I help people identify, clarify, and magnify their purpose. And in the process of doing that, I help them build six and seven figure streams of active, passive, and residual income so they can live their best life and give full expression to their purpose, their passion, and their promise to the world to make it a much better place for all of us here. I just want to say, boom, boom, drop the mic, boom. You know what he does? He's dropping the mic. That was like, boom, succinct, right? <laughs> so what does it mean to live your life on fire? Because that's that's your tagline. That's your jam. That's what you do. So what does that even mean? You know, it's an acronym that I came up with for living life financially independent and retired early. Part of my claim to fame is I have made and lost seven figures twice. Some consider it to be a curse. Some consider it to be a blessing, depending on which side of the coin you're looking at. (laughs) And in one of those runs, I went from literally being bankrupt to uh, building a seven figure net worth, six figures in passive income. And I did that in five years. That was almost 20 years ago. And what I found out, Susie, was having wealth and not having any purpose around wealth is probably one of the most tragic things you can ever do in life because you'll just Mm -hmm. self-sabotage. And so what I love to do is help people become financially independent and retired early, but also retired early. So that gets back to the whole idea of purpose. You know, I've launched my Righteous Billionaire Movement because as I look at the last 20 years and the journey that I've been through making and losing money, being at the feet of many mentors and coaches to not just survive, but thrive through all of that, pulling together all the insights and wisdom that I've gathered from two plus decades and being in the financial services industry, learning how to become a coach, a consultant, all of that's been weaved together with a bigger than life purpose now, which is to try to help raise and create 10,000 billionaire leaders by the year 2030. That's a pretty, pretty big call. It's one that quite frankly scares me, but I know, (laughs) (laughs) I know that I've been created for such a time as this to bring that big vision to the world. And it's what drives me. And having served in the financial services industry, I remember when I work with people who would, you know, back in the day, people would work 30 years for GE or GM, and that was their gig. They were waiting for the Rolex watch, the big party, and (laughs) then they would start living life. And I'm like, who does that? Like who who creates somebody and goes, Susie, I'm going to take 30 years out of your life 
and it's going to be 30 of your most miserable years. But as soon as you retire at 65, baby, it's going to be a party. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you're going to break all those habits that you've made for all those years. And exactly. it just not, doesn't work. Right. And most people hit that age and they start getting sick or their health becomes the thing. So yeah. I love it. I love that you're doing that now for us so that we're not waiting because there is no waiting. Right. It's now. Do it now or do it never. Right. right? Now or don't do it at all. Right. So everyone, this is so funny. I'm watching clients waiting. You know, I'm going to wait for this pandemic to get over. I'm going to wait for the world to get back to normal. There's no waiting. We're not getting back to normal. This is the new norm. What are you seeing? Right. What are the biggest challenges you're seeing um, in your line of work and working with clients? What are you seeing? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, we both kind of hang out in the expert space where we work with coaches and consultants, people who are trying to bring their brilliance into the world. And I believe that one of the biggest challenges that I run across is a lot of people in our space have been sold a bill of goods, right? They've been sold a bill of goods that comes from just a dark place. Uh, we've all bought into this whole idea of the hustle and grind mentality. We've got to work hard. We've been taught that the key to success is to go to school, work hard, get a good job, eventually maybe become an entrepreneur and work hard and work hard <laughs> and work hard. And I say work hard. <laughs> And what I know is if we could just shift the formula a little bit, right? If we could shift the trajectory of what that looks like and get into a position where we're not only working hard to bring our dreams to pass, but we're putting our money to work, to have it work as hard as we do, maybe even harder than we do, then we could get in a position where, like I did almost two decades ago, we could shrink what is ordinarily maybe a 30 year timeline for somebody to become financially independent to as little as two to maybe five years. And so that's part of what I'm really passionate about is empowering people with the knowledge, the wisdom, as well as the opportunities to learn that they can change their relationship with money, especially once they identify, clarify, and magnify what their purpose is. And they can have mm -hmm. money serve as a tool that furthers their purpose versus them being an adversarial relationship with their money. That's just delicious, right? To shorten that path, shorten that learning curve, right? And I love in the beginning, you said active to passive to residual, yes. right? I don't think people think that big. They're just like, I just want to make money. Well, then we just own a J-O-B. <laughs> Nobody wants to own a J-O-B. We didn't do this to own a J-O-B, right? But I see 88% of small businesses make less than a hundred grand a year, go get a job and yeah. you can make more than that. So what was, what's been your pivot during this whole pandemic and during this whole, you know, whatever's happening in the world, what's yeah. been your biggest pivot that you've done in your own business to be able to harness it, capitalize on it? I know we've done well. I think people are searching for people like you and I yep. um, to go, I got to have somebody helping me figure this out to have the active, passive and residual income. Absolutely. Three key things uh, during the pandemic and even before that was really recognizing one, which business we're really in. Right. And I tell people all the time, you're in two critical businesses. One, recognize that you're always in the belief changing business. So whatever it is that you do, whatever your secret sauce is, whatever brilliance it is that you bring into the world, you're going to run slap into a wall of opposition from existing beliefs that people have around what's possible for their life, what they can be, do, or have in that space, and how your unique secret sauce can help them get there. So you're going yeah. to have to figure out a way to change their belief system about why Susie's the one and the only one that can help them get to the mountaintop, right? right. That's the first thing. Second thing is to remember, as great as the secret sauce might look and smell and taste, nobody buys the secret sauce. We don't buy products and online courses and programs and challenges and all the other tools that we use to try to get people to become a client. At the end of the day, people buy relationships. And so you're always in the relationship business. And to the extent you do a good job of honoring that, recognizing that and leveraging that ethically for the good of both the person you're looking to serve as well as yourself, there's a direct correlation to how successful you're going to be. So those two things have been key. And uh, the, less, the last one has been really just recognizing the power of what I would call movement marketing. Mm -hmm. and that's where you shift the trajectory of the emphasis and focus of what you do to where you draw a dividing line that says, this is what our company is all about. 
And if you have 100% of people who believe in you and who want to sing your praises, you're probably doing it wrong. You should almost have like a 50-50 split or when people recognize what your movement is about, what you stand for, they either flock to you like bees to honey and they go, that's the girl I want to follow. They go, I can't stand Susie's guts. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so hard to believe that there are people in the world that just don't get me or don't like me. It's like, she annoys me. I'm like, how can, yeah. I, how can I annoy you? <laughs> Absolutely. I guess I'm doing it right. That's, that's a good but, hey, if you don't have haters that are championing your cause, chances are you're you've got too little a cause that you're championing, right? So Oh, come on, that was juicy. That was delicious, right? <laughs> so what has been because I know that I've learned more and I I'm really transparent and what I love is you are too about sharing your story. Like I learned more in my failure. Yes, the wins are great and you know, that's just a given, but in my failures or, you know, we can call them challenges. We can call them. I know you've had a few. I've had a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's me. It's really built my character. Yeah. What has been your biggest failure and what was the biggest lesson from that? Yeah, I think um, for me, it, it's a little bit of a two part equation is one. Not, not reciprocating the what I would call the selfless love that my wife has showered me and showered our family for decades. She is bar none my hero. She's a rock star. She's a stay at home mom. She homeschools our three kids, and she does such an incredible job at that. Um, I I literally am shocked and amazed uh, at the depths of of just patience and sacrifice that comes with all what she does. So. Uh, you know, the Bible says that many a man claims to have unfailing love, but who can actually find the faithful man? So I've got my work cut out for me. <laughs> it's right. How to reciprocate <laughs> that love. But the other thing, which really is a, a homage to her, and it's something I, I haven't perfected, but I recognize that I have more to grow, is learning how to tap into the wisdom that comes from not checking the boxes and dotting the i's and crossing the t's uh, but just paying homage to your gut just that inner instinct and i think for females it's a lot easier because you guys are more in touch with just how you feel and sense things guys are all about oh well it looks good the numbers add up and as long as the numbers add up and i can you know go through my checks and balances it's go baby go baby go whereas my wife might get around a guy and be like I just don't like him. There's some about him. Right. <laughs> and it's that discernment that's picking yeah. up. And in, initially it kind of like rubs me wrong because I'm like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean you don't like him? What, what has he done? Right, what has he right. done? Right. But then days, weeks, months, years later, we find out something. It's like, yep, should listen to her, you know, around that. Um, so the art of being able to bring in what I would call spiritual discernment into mm -hmm. business uh, and for, you know, you and I are both uh, of the Christian faith, so this isn't foreign for us to talk about the Holy Spirit and how we can right. welcome and invite him into our decision-making process. That's a growth phase of recognizing that as good as you and I are with our skill sets, everything we've done in business, that there is a place for that relationship and what we do and being able to honor the wisdom that flows that is independent on I's being dotted and T's being crossed, but just an inner knowing that says, pass on this deal. Yeah, uh, about the details <laughs> just pass and you'll find out why later right so yeah those have been hard i've had a couple of those <laughs> but i really need the money and i'm like all money's not good money but man when you need the money it's like oh that integrity thing like i gotta trust you know i gotta surrender which is not hard for me no that is hard for me to surrender <laughs> surrender and trust <laughs> especially driven people where we're so used to being able to go one plus one equals two. And I can tell you the one that I did and the one that I added to that to get to two, right? Right. Be able to step back and go, well, maybe one plus one equals 11. Right. Right. So, so who, who do you love working with? Like I always tell my clients, you want to find that ideal qualified client, not just an ideal client. They have to be qualified. For me, qualified is I got to love and adore their mission, their passion, their movement, as you called it. Yep. I've got to love one. I've got to love wanting to work with them. And then they got to love working with me. Right. I don't want to push people uphill anymore. Like 
I'm a little too seasoned for that. There's another word for that old. I'm too old for that. I've already done that. <laughs> like, I can't believe in your dream more than you believe in your dream. And then they got to be able to swipe the card. Because if you're always chasing money, it's exhausting. And then I can't do the work I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So who's that ideal client for you? That ideal qualified client? Because I'm trying to pound that into my student's head. Yeah. Of qualified makes the bigger difference than just, you know, the attributes yeah. of that client. So who's that for you? I think it's, you know, purpose-driven, vision-driven, mission-driven entrepreneurs who uh, recognize that there's something much bigger for them to bring into the world other than what they're currently doing. They're on the path to doing that, but they just know that there's so much more that they can add to the equation of what they have right now. So they have both a bigger-than-life vision, but they also have the financial means to pay for the right team that they need around them. Because you know, you and I both know nobody wins by themselves. You've got to have yeah. an extraordinary team around you. And you have to align yourself with the right coaches and mentors to be able to just uh, suck all of that purpose and destiny that's hidden in the inside of us. So people who recognize that they're here to literally change the world in what little way that they can, and they know that they need the help, and they know that paying for that help is one of the best investments that they can make to get to where they want to be. Those are my kind of people. Right. Me too. I'm with you. But I love your model. Your model is a little bit different. It's kind of radical. Like people think it's radical. I don't. I think it's amazing. Um, and share people your business model because we put a down payment up front, but then you have the a crazy ROI guarantee that I love, yeah. love, love, love that you stand behind. So share with people because I think it's innovative, right? And I think innovation is where more millionaires come from. Like more millionaires will come out of this period in history, yeah. right? If you look at the past, the Great Depression, when you look at um, when we had the recession, more millionaires because they capitalized on that time yeah. and served, right? We serve people. So share with people how you work because I think it's kind of sexy and, and very inventive and... Yeah. We have people like Jay Abraham and a host of other people who've talked about the importance of having a you know market dominating position, a value proposition, creating a blue ocean, whatever terminology you want to use for that. What I have found, Susie, is you know I've I, you know I've spent a ton of money. I've spent way over six figures in coaches and mentors. Some of it good, some of it some of not so good. Yeah. Some not so good, but all were necessary to kind of get you down the path of where you need to be. And through all of that, what I've come to realize and really appreciate is people want results, bottom line. So on both of my two key flagship programs, take the Manifest Wealth Safely program. Our goal within that program, which is uh, a key initiative of the Righteous Billionaire Movement, is to try to help people raise their first million dollars in new wealth over the next two to five years. Now, the way in which we get compensated for being able to do that for them is we use a wealth share model. So if you got accepted into the program as an instance, you might pay 25,000 to be accepted into the program. Our goal is to 10X your investment, right? So over the next two to five years where we're helping you raise seven figures of new wealth and create a minimum of six figures in passive income, once we get you to the first quarter of a million in new wealth, then you pay another 25K. Once we help you get to a half a million in new wealth, you pay another 25. And once we help you get to a million in new wealth, you pay the remaining 25. So you'd have invested 100,000 with us over two years, five years, whatever it may be. But the ROI to you is for the rest of your life, you can bank on the fact that you have at least a million in new wealth and six figures in passive income. Right. I love it. It's new wealth. It's not old money that you're already doing. This is new money generated. Right. So I need you guys to be able to tie the results that we've generated for you. Right. Time that we've been working together. Right. I love it. So Ike, what do you want to be known for? You know, I think I want to be known for that rare, rare jeweler who comes from far away, shows up at your doorstep, and he's got this big briefcase, right? And he comes in and, and it's a custom jeweler. So you're giving him the dimensions and all of the details of what you want this piece of jewelry that you've always dreamed of to look like, feel like, etc. He takes the dimensions, he you know, he does all his magic. And at the end of the day, he goes, okay, well, I'm done. I'm ready to give you this masterpiece. And he reaches back into his briefcase and he grabs a mirror. Mm. Susie, you are the masterpiece. Mm. You don't need that external jewelry. All the value, all the worth lies hidden within you. You just need to be able to see it. Right? That's delicious. Yeah. Right. I love that. Reflect back on who you are and who you've been. 
And it is that, right? Really, a really good coach helps craft that next piece of you. You know, there's that 2,000 year old Chinese poem that says, when the task is accomplished and the work is done, the people will reply, I've done it myself. Mm-hmm. And so when I see my students like celebrating who they are, it's like, oh, our work is done. Our work is done, Ike. That's our right. work is done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. Feeling. I mean, fun, you know, finances and growth in business and all that, but to know that you are somehow remotely or integrally involved in the transformation that somebody experiences, there is no better feeling for me. Me too, right? And we've done this for free for years, right? When you're figuring it out. And I always tell my students, if you're not willing to do it for free, it's not your passion. Now we don't want to do it for free. We all have mortgages and we have our own wealth goals. And, but that's when you know you're in your jam, you're in your lane, you're in your mojo. Yes, you can make money at anything, but that thing that you never feel like you work again, I don't feel like I work. I'm working right now. It doesn't feel like work. I'm hanging out with my brother, right? Um, We're having this juicy conversation. So that's our goal for you is to go, what's that thing that lights me up to where it it's exciting. Every appointment for me is exciting. It's new opportunity, possibility, wealth building strategy. And I know you're the same way. I think Uh, that's why we're kindred spirits, right? (laughs) Soul brother and sister. No doubt. No doubt. (laughs) So what's one question you wish I would have asked you that you know our audience needs to hear, right? Because they're in that sweet spot where they're growing, they're scaling a seven to eight figure business, right? They're wanting, they're looking for their next. What's one thing you wish I would have asked so that, that you can share with them? Yeah, I think it ties back to... Um, just the philosophy that they have about what success looks like, right? And, um, you know, we we work, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I laugh about just, you know, the mindset around the transition from being an employee to taking the leap of faith and starting your own thing. And many of us complained about, you want me to work overtime? Are you, you kidding? No, nah, I got places to be, things to do, people to see, right? So we harbor the idea of working 12 hour days for somebody else. Like, you know, I can build that mousetrap better. I'm just going to do this myself. And we step out there, we try to do it ourselves. And all of a sudden, 12 hour days become the norm where it's yeah. like, if that's all you do. You're like, man, that was a light day at the office, right? So this whole ideology of working hard has been ingrained to us for a long time. And I just want to shift the trajectory of our thought process around what the success equation looks like. Yes, work hard, build the vision, uh, align yourself with Vision Cares to help you, you know, take that business to the next level. But don't be ignorant about your money, the parable of the talents. I mean, there's all kinds of juicy parables and stories that we can look at that talks about the responsibility that we have in properly stewarding the gift that we have that's generating cash flow. So if you're generating cash flow, let's put that cash flow to its highest and best use. And that's why, you know, my Live Your Life on Fire Masterclass is something I'm really, really passionate about because that's part of what we'll be imparting into people, this whole idea that we can get our money working harder for us than we're accustomed to working for it. And in so doing, we can shift what would take 30 years to accomplish down to as little as five, maybe even two years. And how do we find out about that Live Your Life Masterclass? Because I know people are like, wait, er, stop. Where do I find this masterclass? Right. Because we are lifelong learners in this tribe and community. And so I, you know, I was I'm I've done my due diligence. Ike's the real deal. Right. (laughs) There's a lot of charlatans in our industry. We don't want you to come across that. So how do we find out about Live Your Life? Yeah. So they can simply go to www.livingyourlifeonfire.com dot com www.livingyourlifeonfire.com if they want a bitly link bitly forward slash l y l on fire and i'll put that all in the show notes so that you have that and and do you have like a free we love free things right to, we want a taste of ike before we invest in ike so you know i'm saying i'm giving my friends hooking my friends up right so, <laughs> What's the hookup, Ike? What's Random the hookup? family hookup. So listen, I want you to access uh, my complimentary guide. It's a three-step guide on how to do exactly what this masterclass is all about. Live your life on fire. So you can access that at bit.ly again, bit.ly forward slash the number three step guide. So bit.ly. So easy. 
three step guide all spelt out not the not the number three but the t-h-r-e oh good okay because i put the number three look i'm yep. there you <laughs> writing go. it down thank you for Jesus. saying that right yep. <laughs> so any encouraging words to encourage people to explore with you you know right. how to play or you know what's the best way to get some more ike juiciness yeah, so my final word to the audience would be this, right? When you look at your past, and we all do, pay particular attention to what you see, right? Because when you start looking at the past, you might see missed opportunities, you might see regrets, you might see opportunities to perhaps have gained wisdom and insight. That's all great. But regardless of what you see, I want you to do me and to do the rest of the world this favor. Never draw a conclusion or a summary or place an exclamation point around what's possible for you to be, do, or have in this life based on your past experiences, because that limits the seed of greatness that lies within you about what's possible for your future. I'm living proof of that. I have made and lost seven figures. I've fought battles with the SEC. I have been betrayed. There isn't a negative experience that you <laughs> can probably list that I haven't gone through. <laughs> And here I am on the verge of declaring five years from now, not only will I be a billionaire, but I'll have at least 9,999 other friends of mine that I bring with me along the way. So mark it, here we are, September the 22nd, 2021. Susie and I will do another podcast, September the 22nd, 2026. Yes. We'll visit this and talk about what that journey. How we did. I got chills right now, Ike, when you said that. I got chills. And you gotta say, when he's talking about his failure, he's got this big cheesy grin on his face if you're not watching this and you're like listening to it. <laughs> like, that's when you know you're complete with whatever the past was right is that you can laugh about it you're not crying about it like whatever it's money we can always get more money right what we can't get what you said earlier was those relationships this kind of thing you know the love of your wife and your children and that family you know we do what we do to provide for them you know my children your children right, right? so i just appreciate you and your magic and your love and your commitment i love that you bring god in the space in every conversation that we have yeah. you know i i'm proud that you're a man of god and a man of faith and you you know proclaim that and say that i think the world needs to stop hiding out and share what what we all need to hear Right. So thank you for being my brother in this journey. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting our tribe. I'm so excited to introduce you to our community and look forward to creating more magic and to be, be on the billion dollar wagon because I'm going to billion dollar wagon with you. I'll be one of those 9,995. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. I'm going to put all those links in our show notes and please go follow. I please go search them on social media, right? Start getting the wisdom and start implementing because we do want, I have a page, two pages of notes. We want that active, passive and residual income. It's not for some of us. It's for all of us. Us, right and wealth is your birthright right you're in business for yourself not by yourself we're here to help you any way that you need right i know that i'm not always the right coach that's why i want to bring people that are complement to what i do right we're not in competition i can refer me business i'll refer him business because every now and then you need somebody different you need another flavor and so i'm bringing you all my flavors all my people all my badass guns so thank you my brother i appreciate you and look forward to continued success Absolutely. and the billion dollar ride the billion dollar <laughs> ride let's, let's hop on that choo-choo train baby it's taking exactly <laughs> i think it's more of the bullet train than the choo-choo yeah. train <laughs> <laughs> thank you my brother thank you sudi love you Thank you for joining us for this episode of Power Your Profits podcast. Let these building blocks from today's most successful industry leaders equip you with the necessary resources and tools to finally establish the highly profitable business of your dreams. Want to hear more? Listen to more episodes at https colon double slash poweryourprofitspodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the show. Now is your time to rise to the top of your game. So be sure to catch our next episode. Until next time.